Hi everyone, Stone Crypto here, bringing back to you some more rock solid crypto tutorial content. Today's topic, I'll be going over how to research in crypto space and what tools you should be using. I'll get started with kind of a foundation overview on how you can begin your research in the crypto space and then touch up on some of the platforms that I use, my checklist, and then the do's and don'ts of doing research. So when you're getting started in researching any type of topic, you need to learn about how this information is released into the public and where you can go and get that information. And for the crypto world, a majority of the information is released either directly by the company on their website or through Twitter. You want to make sure that you're always doing your due diligence when you're doing this information and confirm your argument or conclusion or what your decision that you're going to make with information from multiple different sources. You want to search for FUD surrounding your topic or coin of choice because it helps you better understand any pitfalls that you may have. It just gives you, allows you to see from different perspectives and make sure that your argument is legit. And lastly, just for like anything that you're starting off with, you want to build a strong foundation. And in cryptocurrencies, that foundation is built on the understanding of blockchain economics and the basics of financial markets. So for crypto platforms, you have to understand that the crypto market is a market that never sleeps. It's a 24 seven market, even on the holidays like Christmas and New Year's all over the world. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner, the traditional markets in the US on a normal five day week is 32.5 hours. They open at 9.30 a.m. and close at 4 p.m. Compared to the crypto market, it's a five to one ratio, 168 hours to 32.5. Because this market is constantly moving and it never closes, you need real-time market updates. And the best place to do that because a lot of places and businesses are closed on Saturdays and Sundays and after 5 p.m., Twitter is the number one go-to spot for crypto real-time market updates and you can get updates from certain ico teams traders media outlets public figures basically anyone important that is in the crypto realm is on twitter and because crypto or because twitter limits uh, the amount of characters that you can post and tweet out a lot of these comments and tweets come in a TL or too long didn't read type of format. Sometimes they'll come with links. So you want to make sure that you're always following up and doing your own due diligence, researching this information and notifications that you're getting from Twitter. You also want to use YouTube. YouTube is great for people that work or have other engagements that they need to tend to because a lot of these YouTube personalities do daily market updates, summaries, in-depth coin and ICO analysis. It's a little bit behind Twitter on uh, real-time news, but if you're really busy and you don't have your finger on the pulse with Twitter all the time at your computer or on your phone, then YouTube is something that you can always go to at the end of the day or during any one of your breaks. Reddit. Reddit's a great alternative media outlet for looking into kind of debates and controversy on certain coin. It's not the greatest for breaking news, but if you want to get multiple different perspectives, um, the good and the bad for any type of uh, crypto decision you're looking to make, Reddit's a good spot for that because Twitter limits the amount of characters you can post while Reddit does not. We have GitHub next. GitHub is very similar to Slack and Telegram. It's basically a transparent chat and communication platform for development teams and coders to display their code for open source review. Open source review is basically allowing the public to look at the code that they're putting together for their coin. So if you're a coin that you're looking into and it's already been on the market for a while, trading on exchanges and doesn't have a GitHub, it's probably a red flag. But a lot of these ICOs may not have GitHubs and then slowly get their GitHub open as they build a stronger development team, get some more time to actually work on their platform and code it and develop it they should then have a GitHub for you to, to look at. But it's always a positive if there's a GitHub there because that team's actually trying to be transparent, trying to work out any kinks that they may have. 
bitcointalk.org. It's an older forum that is mostly used now for ICOs and most companies that are launching ICOs will need and be required to, to create a forum on bitcointalk.org. If there isn't a, a forum there, a community there for that particular company, it's probably a red flag. But you can go to bitcointalk.org to review and look through all the pages of that particular coin that's looking to ICO, what people are saying about it, any red flags on there, um, good, bad, Coin market cap, most of you guys are familiar with that. It's the most comprehensive real-time ranking of coins by market capitalization. Slack and Telegram, they're private chat platforms that are used by crypto teams to basically communicate with you and engage with you in a, a more real-time type of format. And you can get access to these Slack and Telegram channels by going to their website and then asking for an invite. And lastly, if you can't find it, the information that you're looking for either on their website directly or through any one of these channels you can go and google it so my crypto research checklist that uh, i ideally like to have all of this checked off before investing into any any crypto and if there is something that's not checked off that's a red flag so i'll start off with what is the mission and goal of this particular cryptocurrency and is the solution necessary do they decentralize? Um, are they decentralizing a, a certain industry that has, let's say, a large monopoly currently in the traditional world? So spaces like pharmaceuticals or online retail are pretty much dominated by a handful of players. If there's a way to decentralize that market or information, that would be something that I would look into. Coin supply and price. So never look at any of those two individually. A lot of people are talking about coins such as Ripple because the, the price is, was very cheap. They're expecting Ripple to hit $10, $100. Let's go look at that real quick. So here's coin market cap. You can see Ripple over here is at $3 and the circulating supply is $38 billion. So if you're expecting Ripple to hit $10 or even $100, here is where I'll show you that is unreasonable. So at even $7 right now, that would be over double the price of Ripple. That would put it, $7 would roughly put Ripple at a one-to-one -one or equal with Bitcoin's market cap. At $10, Ripple would be the number one cryptocurrency in the world. And at $100, that will put ripple at 10 times over 10 times the value of bitcoin and how you get market capitalization is just price multiplied by circulating supply so when you're looking into a cryptocurrency never look into it based off the price you have to look at based off of market capitalization also all the fundamental reasons as well blockchain utilization you want to make sure that that coin or that company actually has a reason to be on the blockchain. That by putting it on the blockchain, it actually disrupts the industry that it's in by decreasing costs, increasing speed, lower, lowering, and making things a lot more efficient. You also have coin lockup period. For those of you who are not familiar with what lockup period means, um, a lot of IPOs such as Facebook when they IPO will have a lockup period for the shares that the management team holds and why their shares are locked up is pretty much to incentivize the team to work hard during that lockup period whether it's one year three years or five years all the way up until that lockup period because if they're not working hard and the price of the coin drops because people are becoming fearful or uncertain or doubting the direction of the company because they're not actively trying to grow and alleviate these concerns, well then they're gonna lose out when they try to sell their coins at the end of that one year period. So these lockup periods are meant to incentivize the founders and the management team to work hard up until the lockup period. So make sure that the coin that you're looking at has a decent lockup period, it's not a three month or six month lockup period. And if there's no lockup period, that's probably a major red flag. I touched on team relevance in my previous video 
but I'll go into a little bit more detail here. So you wanna make sure that people have a strong background in whatever type of company that they're starting in because that it creates a hurdle if you don't have experience in something. Let's say you have a great idea, you wanna revolutionize the space, make a difference in the world, but you, know, you don't have experience in that field. Well, there's gonna be a lot of hurdles, a lot of issues that you haven't come across before because you haven't worked in that space. And those are gonna be problems you're gonna to have to deal with. And maybe you won't know how to deal with them. Or it's just gonna take you a little bit longer to solve. Well, that's gonna make your company's chance of success a little bit lower. It doesn't automatically mean you're gonna fail. It could mean that you're gonna fail. But you wanna make sure that the coins that you're investing, the teams that you're investing in, have the greatest chance of success. So you wanna make sure that the team has a strong, relevant background in that particular industry. You wanna make sure that that individual's history, every individual's history on the team is good, that they're not hopping from company to company, that they actually have a decent amount of experience, that they're not some, let's say, 21-year-old that is putting themselves as the, the head of IT. And you wanna make sure the combination of everyone together meshes well, and makes a strong team. Lastly, on my crypto checklist, I always try to kind of destroy my potential argument or my investment decision. So why is investing in Ripple bad? And then I'll look for potential reasons why investing in Ripple would be bad. Let's say there's uh, infinite amount of coins that can be created. The coins are not mined. They're pretty much printed. The Ripple coin is different from the Ripple network and a lot of the partnerships that have been brought on board with these banks are with the Ripple network, not with the Ripple coin. So those are all major red flags. And now that's gonna change my investment decision on Ripple. So in summary, the do's and don'ts of crypto research, make sure that you're actively following as many crypto influencers on Twitter and YouTube. Don't buy into a coin because of its cheap price. Look at the actual market capitalization of the coin and invest in a coin for fundamental reasons, not for price reasons. And always try to break down your own argument to see if there's any flaws in it when you're making any type of decision. Lastly, if you like this particular episode, feel free to like, subscribe, and follow Stone Crypto for updates, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.